are back. Welcome back to the King's Report, folks, on this beautiful, chilly Monday morning. It is a glorious day outside. Remember to give glory to God all times, at all times. And as Revelation 3.11 says, let no man take thy crown. Remember, you are a child of God. and We stand in authority as co-heirs with Christ that must stand up against unrighteousness. And now we are here joined with a warrior in Christ. Uh, once again, Mrs. Oh, Juanita Broderick, oh my goodness, okay, baby, are you okay? <laughs> They're all right. They're all right. Is joining us um, this morning. Of course, she has a new work out, a uh, new book that is uh, a collaboration with journalist Nick Lully. Uh, you better put some ice on that, How I Survived Being Raped by Bill Clinton. Uh, this is by Juanita Broderick and Nick Lully. This is Juanita's story. Uh, she was, of course, the uh, brave... Uh, woman who came out and uh, exposed the fact of Bill Clinton's predatory nature and his, uh, the rape epidemic that he was basically uh, living through his um, using positions of power in state and in government. And of course, Hillary Clinton covering up for him, attacking and trying to destroy the women's lives whom he had raped. So a complete enabler and a completely des destroyer of families, destroyers of people's lives, destroyer of women, a predator enabler, protector, uh, Hillary Clinton, of course, who failed this time. But now, uh, Mrs. Broderick, now they're starting to push for Oprah, uh, who was on the Golden Globes and didn't mention Bill Clinton even once, or Har Harvey Weinstein once. Uh, what's your view on um, Oprah now being promoted as a new Hillary Clinton and running in 2020. Oh, it's it's absolutely horrific, uh, Pastor. It's it's so upsetting to me. Back in 2004, Oprah did, went to the Clinton home and did a complete in-depth interview with Bill Clinton, and you could for her for her O magazine. And at the time. All she did was want to know about Monica Lewinsky. She wanted to know about Bill Clinton's infidelities. And not once did Oprah ask him about the women that he had sexually assaulted. And I think that's so wrong. And she's continued her friendship with him to this day and has never denounced him as a sexual predator. And I think that's wrong. Well, what's interesting is that she was on the campaign trail promoting Hillary Clinton. And even when, you know, President Trump, you were there uh, standing by President Trump's uh, side and supporting the president on his campaign trail at the time. Um, and of course, at the debates. And we know that, uh, you know, not only George Soros was the number one funder for Hillary Clinton, but Oprah was also openly uh, supporting her. Many of the celebrities were. None of them are denouncing the fact that she is a predator enabler, a sexual assaulter enabler, and protector and destroyer of the victims. She doesn't only protect, she goes after the victims whom her president, I mean, who her husband has destroyed. Oh, that's so right. You know, I, I can never understand what her motive was for attacking us like she did, unless it was due to her own personal gain. You know, she does not have a marriage with Bill Clinton. She has a partnership with him, a partnership in crime. Right. Yes, yes. It's so interesting because they've almost like agreed, they've almost sold their soul to the devil, agreeing that they're going to use this political marriage as a, as a sort of front to pretend like they're good people in a healthy, strong Christian marriage. Meanwhile, they're engaged in all sorts of nefarious activity, Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton from Mena, Arkansas, when they were just unknown governors out there, were, of course, uh, colluding with the CIA to run the drug trade through that area. And they were getting caught. And the young people were seeing these drug trains coming through. And they were reporting that to the police. And all of a sudden, these young kids were getting killed. They were getting disappeared. All of a sudden, the FBI was coming down there. And, and, and it was all hush-hush uh, under Clinton, Bill Clinton's reign. You had the Oklahoma City bombing when Timothy McVeigh was an open intelligence agency uh, worker. He was working for the CIA. It looks like he got double-crossed. And, of course, 
You have the ATF and bomb squads that were in there, in the building the day before uh, doing weird activity. And the ATF was in the building. Uh, the, the offices got a phone call. Everybody who was an employee of the ATF got a phone call the day before the bombing to not come to work on that day. Isn't that a coincidence? Very, very uh, ridiculous. And of course, when people study the actual explosion, uh, they found that the pillars were not exploded into the building, but actually the pillars exploded out from the building, which shows that there actually were explosives inside the building, not from outside. Yeah, it's it, it was a horrible incident, you know, and I blame Bill Clinton for that. You know, as far as all of the drugs down in Mena, Arkansas, I never heard, heard about those too much. Uh, after, after my rape occurred, I pretty well put, just threw myself into my business and my job and tried to avoid anything in regard to news about him. But then, of course, in the 90s, it became to the forefront, and I began to learn about all of these things. And I actually believe that he was a user himself. I oh, believe yeah. that, yes, I, I truly believe that. Uh, I, I had heard this from another woman who had had an affair with him. I said, why would he do things like that? Why, when he had women that he could go to, would he rape someone? And she said, well, you know, he was using a lot of cocaine at the time. Now, the truth of this, I do not know, but I believe it. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised at all if he was under the intoxication of, of substances. I believe from a spiritual perspective, he's definitely under the intoxication of Satan. Um, and, and, his, has, and his lust for power is unbelievable. The Clintons are just, have been uh, completely, have been used uh, by the most dangerous mafia groups, including George Soros, international banking cartels, yeah. that are used that you know that implode literally sovereign citizens sovereign nations and they were being used as the sort of point people to take down america disarm the public make us into an imploded un i mean eu and look at what's happening in europe i mean just completely the migrants are running running it over running down the states are becoming balkanized it's becoming even more ghettoized it's becoming even more race racial um, you know all the stability that we had is being taken apart and that's by design because if the people are unstable and they're balkanized and they're fighting with one another, then the UN and George Soros and these elites can swoop in as the saviors. And instead of relying on Jesus and God, we have to rely on these politicians to make peace. And then they have this in this big illusion, of course, uh, the, the devil being the father of all lies. Right. Yeah, they, they are evil people. I believe they've been completely taken over by the devil. It's so interesting because from a spiritual perspective, you know, the Bible talks about we fight not against flesh and blood. Of course, we're supposed to stand up against unrighteousness and the wicked. But at the same time, we, we fight against rulers of the darkness of the world and spiritual wickedness in high places. And you can see that the more the government becomes centralized, any government across time and history, the more it becomes centralized, the more predatory people want to get to that power and the more you know, uh, uh, central the government is and larger it is, the federal government that is, uh, you have almost a psych psychopathic people in society that get magnetized to this and their lust for power just drives them to want to hold that political, you know, uh, uh, authority, which will then allow them to rule over the population. And this is what you see with the left. They, they're completely hardcore communists. My father was, of course, in prison in North Korean gulags, he lived under the Kim regime. All our family relatives that are uh, there in uh, North Korea have been killed. I mean, this is, this is what you get when you sell your soul to the archangel and to Satan on the national level. The people are supposed to be the sovereigns. They're supposed to be the children of God, not the government, which is supposed to serve them as a servant, not the master. And this, of course, as society, we have, we have done listening to these uh, uh, liberals and being shamed by them uh, and they're lecturing to us at all, all, all for all these years. 
Oh, that's so right. Isn't it wonderful? I think we had God's interference when President yes. Trump won. You know, <laughs> I think that he said, okay, I've had enough of this. I'm going, I'm going to interfere and, and Donald Trump is what's right for America. God stepped in and made a way. <laughs> and Nancy Pelosi and Maxine Waters are trying to stop it <laughs> with Oprah Winfrey. Oh, my goodness. But it is a serious thing that I think the conservative uh, party, conservative folks and libertarian folks have to think about and prepare for. Because whether we like it or not, Oprah has tremendous clout. She has tremendous sway. I mean, people, she has, people have grown up watching Oprah. People have had her in their, in their living, living room through the TV for decades. And she's almost like this you know, moral authority for a lot of people, even conservatives who watch her show. And we have to be clear. We have to have discernment at this time and be able to see through the propaganda because there's so much propaganda surrounding Oprah. Oh, I know there is. Uh, and so many people... Uh, even in Hollywood and New York have come out against her. Did you see where Seal came out against her? And uh, I thought that was very brave of him. It's very difficult in the Hollywood elite to come out against one of your own, but many are and many more will. Well, it's very important because Hollywood needs to crumble. It's it, Hollywood was behind Hillary. Hollywood, you know, uh, the orthodoxy there is communist. It's centralized power. It's complete, you know, totalitarianism. And of right. course, pedophilia. Now they're getting caught with the not only raping of women and exploitation of young girls who are attracted there by, you know, fame and fortune and being in a movie. Um, and then and then not only that, but they're they're now clamping down on the pedophile rings that Harvey Weinstein maybe have been participating in, that these sexual predators have been, uh, you know, uh, uh, participating in. It's now become exposed that Hollywood is not only there in terms of, you know, sexual looseness and free sex culture, but that it actually is protecting pedophiles like uh, Polanski, who was who raped a 14 year old girl anally. Um, and, and, and Meryl Streep was up applauding him, saying that he's such oh. a, a genius. I mean, this I is a type of culture. Incredible. I know. I was so upset. And I still, whenever I go on Twitter, will put those pictures up of those people standing up applauding Roman Polanski for all of his uh, uh, work in the film industry. That is horrific for them to do that. It's wrong. Well, it's, 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 it shows, it's emblematic of the type of culture they have there and what the what the type of sexual looseness what moral relativism gives you when we leave god and leave his 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 commandments and his nature which is that he is just and he's not adulterous he's faithful etc when we leave that we we create a society which is which allows us which the elites can run and they're protected from doing evil yeah. upon the population right and you know I was uh, uh, 35 years old when uh, my assault happened. I cannot imagine, Pastor, how, how it is on a child. And a child, it, it just ruins yeah. their life. Yeah. 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 I mean, I had difficulty, but I, I can't imagine uh, a child having to suffer that. I remember you, you mentioned that the type of fear that you felt because of retribution, and you are 35 years old, imagine if you're 14 years old, 12 years old, 11 years old, the fear of these power elites. Yeah, it, it's got to be the most horrible thing and affects them the rest of their life. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, it was very difficult on me because I had to see this man day after day on TV, see him succeed, see him do well, and have to remain quiet. And see him get promoted. It's so it's so amazing. And he was this unknown Nina, Arkansas governor. And all of a sudden, he's the president of the United States because he was he was you know working hand in hand with the running the drug trade with the CIA. I mean, you have top Air Force officials, you have top um, uh, special forces operations, uh, special operations uh, folks who have come out saying that look, they were running, they were flying the drugs in from Latin America, they were flying them in, and our government was running them. We have, of course, pictures 
of our troops guarding the poppy fields in Afghanistan. I mean, how ridiculous is that, that we are, we have monopolized the heroin drug trade, $800 billion industry. And that's how the CIA is paying for their black ops and the dangerous things that they're doing. I mean, it's such an absurd thing that our government is involved in that. It's just so absurd. Oh, I know. It's, uh, it, it makes you wonder what it's coming to. But I think we're going to see change. Uh, yes. I really think change is coming. And I've heard through a lot of my friends in the media that big changes are going to come this week with the Clinton Foundation and new allegations and new uh, uh, problems for the Clintons and all of their friends. Oh, I heard that too. I heard last week they were already reporting, you know, the, the news uh, with the mainstream media was trying to cover up the fact that Hillary Clinton's now um, associates down the ladder, so to speak, are starting to get indicted. There's actually indictments that Jeff Sessions is now bringing upon them. And of course, that trail will lead right up to the Clinton Foundation and to Beale and Hillary Rodden Clinton. Um, but they were using the whole coverage of Trump saying the S-hole comments, which, of course, a senator is saying that he didn't say, and he was in the meeting, he said he didn't say that. Uh, but the media is whipping that up into a storm, saying that he's racist. And CNN is now saying Trump is 100% racist. We should impeach him. This is a travesty, et cetera. But there are, and also, there's also new news about the Las Vegas shooting, that there is a potential second shooter, which health ranger uh, Mike Adams also exposed with the acoustic analysis, as he is a scientist, breaking down the actual time-lapse audio, showing that there are two machine gunners uh, at the at the um, at the scene but now that's becoming confirmed it looks like through the um, the, the uh, FBI and different organs in the government which are now showing that there may be a potential second shooter the, the MSM wanted to cover that up and that, that's why they were distracting the world with all this insanity uh, with the s hole comment and of course the nuclear ballistic missile uh, scare that happened in Hawaii for 38 minutes of terror. Oh, I know. I have a good friend, Laura Loomer. She's one of the main investigative reporters that's stayed so much in Los Angeles, in uh, Las Vegas. She and I will be on uh, 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 the keynote speakers next week at the Women's Conservative um, meet in uh, Las Vegas. And she was talking last night about all the new information that's come out about this man's girlfriend. And uh, she's really getting into it. Things are gonna come out about that very soon. And the cover up, and why the cover up in Las Vegas? Why, why would they feel the need to cover it up? It, it, it doesn't make any sense. And as far as the Clintons, I have been through four decades of watching these people get in trouble and get right out of it. And I have always thought they're bulletproof. They're, there's just no way and not understand it. And now, hopefully, before I die, I will see them uh, be able to face all the charges against them. Well, it's interesting because these elites always historically want to create a society where they're above the law and they can rule and reign with impunity and do whatever they want to the population and literally just cackle and laugh at us as we are their vulnerable prey before they devour us. This is the type of civilization they always create. And it's from the pit of hell. It's from Satan himself. Yeah, it's, uh, it's so frustrating. And just like I said on my Twitter account, I said, I have been through hundreds of gotcha moments, you know, with the Clintons yeah. and praying and hoping that something would come of it only to find out that nothing ever did. So hopefully we're there, Reverend Moon. I just hope we're there. Well, we thank God for your bravery, uh, Juanita, in standing up against really one of the biggest crime bosses in American history. I mean, you almost alone have taken on this mantle. I'm sure many times during uh, the four decades, and as you broke the story, uh, uh, how much you feared for your life, the, the threats, the, the, the intimidation factors. I mean, they had so much power. I mean, it's unimaginable to the normal person how much, how much intimidation they could wreak upon anybody who would dare to say anything. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a nightmare.
you know, there's been so many things in my life I've had to alter to try to just live, you know, live with without fear. And then finally, yes. you just accept the fear. You yes. accept that this is going to be your life and you just have to deal with it. Well, that is such an important, important note. Let's get into that a little bit more. Let's first take a break. We'll be right back after this with our uh, incredible hero, Mrs. Juanita Roderick. Stay with us. about the sanctity of marriage and the sanctity of intimacy in marriage. Amen? After the blessing, when you realize that you made that pact deal, now just because you just got blessed already doesn't mean um, you have the whole world in your hand yet. It means that you're, we're step, it's, it's a process that you step by step understand in person. Um, or understand what reflection are you? And what, how can you express the good, good, better person within yourself to your spouse as well to your new extended family? We did a lot of love and respect, kind of like education and training. And I, I think that we definitely apply that a lot in our daily lives, which is a huge blessing that helps us out. Um, but it's, it's different and it's not always easy, like especially... Um, like when you're single, I think that sometimes you get this like rose. The sense, the sense of doubt a little bit. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. But uh, like you get like this idea that the blessing is gonna be like once you're blessed, everything's gonna be hunky dory and everything's gonna oh, be yeah. uh, like grandeur. But you know, it's still just everyday life. Not like it's not like it sucks or anything, but it it's great. But it is it does have its challenges, new challenges that you know. Okay. Even even though I've. You know, it's not like I've never known a guy before. I have, you know, my I'm very close to like my brothers, and I have, you know, a lot of male figures in my life. But to live like as a wife is something that I've never done before. So uh, it's it has the ups and downs, but you know, you, it's something that it's totally all teamwork. Like you guys got to work together, communicate together, and you know, it's just you work through it, and it you get stronger with every. Mm -hmm every challenge that seems to come in its way, so, me. <laughs> Car Arms, Magnum Research, and Auto Ordnance. The Car Firearms Group. With a diverse product line that blends American craftsmanship with cutting edge technology. It's no secret why gun enthusiasts choose Car Firearms Group. From the Desert Eagle and Baby Desert Eagle made famous by Hollywood. The history of the 1911 and the Tommy gun. To the best in compact concealed carry. Car Firearms Group is not only the first name in personal defense, it's a name that has earned the respect of gun enthusiasts around the world. Concealment. Innovative technology. Value. Accuracy. And history. Car Firearms Group. Made in the USA. Visit car.com today. Hi, I'm Joby Gorgas with Magnum Research. I'm here to tell you a little bit about our new L5 and 44 mag. Uh, this is our 5 inch model, lightweight model. Uh, it's got an aluminum grip frame, uh, shaving down the weight so that we can get it under 50 ounces so that it's New York legal. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how to properly hold the L5 for function. When shooting a Desert Eagle, 
you want to make sure that your dominant arm is locked out, pushing back into the back of the grip. Your, your secondary hand is holding around the front of the grip to keep the muzzle flip down. Uh, this gives you a good firm hold for proper cycling. Uh, we got to remember that the Desert Eagle is a gas-operated rotating bolt semi-automatic pistol, uh, not unlike an AR system. I also want to talk to you about the stance for shooting the Desert Eagle. Uh, when shooting the Desert Eagle, you need a good firm base. So you want to step into your direction, get that arm locked, that support hand on, and lean forward into it so that you can handle that recoil. back folks it's monday january 15th 2018 saying king we're born live from this chunny studios to all the kings and queens of the kingdom of god good morning folks it is 7 47 we are here again joined by juanita broderick uh, a true patriot and a hero uh, she should be she should be on the forefront of all women's magazines time magazine you name it she's standing up against oppressors and assailants against women. I mean, she's the one who risked her life to do this against one of the biggest power brokers and mafia bosses in the whole world. I mean, this is ridiculous that the leftist media always tries to erase you, Juanita, from the uh, center stage and from, from, from public view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been discouraging. And you talked about the Time Magazine. They asked me to be involved in that and submit a statement, which I did in support of the Me Too, and then they left it out. <laughs> they didn't want it. Wow. I was not liberal enough. Incredible. I mean, they, this is what's so amazing. And in the end, you know, in, 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 in the end times, you know, the, in Isaiah it says, good will be called evil, evil will be called good. But that's actually, it, it exposes evil. Because when the Time Magazine pretends that it's some kind of unbiased magazine organization and they do things like that, it only exposes them and it gets out. Everybody knows about it. Right, right. It does. Uh, and, but that's OK. I, I was Me Too long before it was cool to be Me Too. <laughs> long before they had hashtag Me Too, it was Juanita Broderick. OK, <laughs> folks. <laughs> now, Juanita, if you could tell us about uh, your upcoming event in Las Vegas, also how you're trying to uh, build people's awareness uh, about the liberal uh, 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 marches, women's marches, et cetera. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about that upcoming event in Vegas. Sure, in Las Vegas next week on uh, January the 20th, we will be, there will be many conservative women and conservative men speakers to bring awareness to the conservative women and men. Uh, the liberal women with all their ridiculous hats will be out there on Sunday for their hateful, hate-filled march. You know, that's the mm. difference in the conservative group and the liberal group. They spew, the liberal group spews hate. And that's, that's just what they're known for is these hateful remarks where the conservative women are conservative. And we, we, mm. spread, we spread joy and love. And so that's really what we want to do. We want to bring awareness that this women's march against our president has become a voter registration march. They are going mm. to every state to try to get uh, illegal aliens driver's license where then they can influence their vote. Once they get the driver's license, then they can vote. And these women mm. will try to get them to vote, of course, liberal. It's a dangerous situation. And we're trying to counteract that. Well, you know, it's so interesting. The liberals know what they're doing. 
they know the public is so dumbed down by video games and mainstream media and computer, com internet, etc., that they know that they can literally lie to them and they'll believe it. I mean, they can, they're going to say, oh, we're, we're against voter registration because nobody should be able to, people should be able to be free and vote free. I mean, give me a break. The fact that you have to show that you're the person that you're saying you are, that's some kind of racist thing. How ridiculous is that? Oh, I know. And uh, this is what they're doing. It's the people that are not aware of our laws and aware that President Trump is not against uh, the, the illegal aliens. He's against the criminal illegal alien. The people yes. that rape and plunder and kill. I was on a program last week with a woman named Sabine Durden. Her 22-year-old child, her son, Dominic, was murdered by an illegal alien. Look at all the others that has suffered at the criminal aspect of these people. We don't want them voting. We don't want them here. I mean, they shouldn't be here in the first place, as you, as you just said. I mean, goodness, it's the, the Democrats have been caught by Project Veritas and James L. Keefe's undercom, undercover camera team. They were caught during the campaign trail. Hillary Clinton operators and Democratic operators in different states were caught on camera yeah. saying that they bus people on buses and they do this rotation system where they have them voting at different places and they continue to come back and vote yeah. again and vote again. Harvard study says about three to four million potential illegal immigrants have voted for Hillary Clinton, of course, putting, pushing her above Trump, et cetera. I mean, the Democrats know that this is a technique that they can use and they've been using for decades that they can get more Democratic votes on. You bring people in from communists and third world countries from left leaning areas, put them on welfare and say the Democrats will perfect, protect that. The Republicans want to take it away and they'll, of course, vote Democrat. If they oh, can that's, yeah, that's right. And this was brought to light. So these people that were doing this have sort of gone in the background. And now you have these women marchers that are taking up their cause. And that's what's dangerous. It's so interesting because you said that these, these liberal marchers, many times they're saying that we're standing there, we're doing these women's marches. They're not for women. If you're a conservative woman, you get attacked by them. They don't consider conservative women women. I mean, this is many times led by people like Linda Sarsour, you know, Sharia law supporting, you know, uh, Linda Sarsour, funded by George Soros, who says, you know, Ayn, Ayn, um, uh, uh, Hershey, uh, I'm sorry, Cersei, uh, the woman who was had a refugee fled from uh, a radical Islamic country who had her, you know, genitals mutilated. Uh, she says that she doesn't deserve to have a vagina because she disagrees with Linda Sarsour. And it's funny how these women marchers, they never stand up against radical Islam. They never stand up against Sharia law and the oppressive misogynistic nature of Orthodox Islam. They never stand up against the hijab. In fact, they wear the hijab, say that that's powerful. When in the Middle East, when you know they're liberated from ISIS, women take off the hijab as an act of freedom. I mean, they're so hypocritical. How can they ally with radical Islam as a women's march. I mean, how do you make sense of that? Oh, I don't, I don't know. And the hatred that they spew, Reverend Moon, it's, uh, it's so vile. And, and so we're going to do the opposite. You know, we're going to uh, share and love and hope for our nation uh, instead of them downing everything that the president does. We're going to support him. Uh, mm. And those ridiculous hats that they wear, you know, representing the female anatomy, it's, it's, it's so, it's terrible. <laughs> it's so interesting because you have like people like Madonna and, you know, uh, Chelsea Handler that and come Ashley out. Judd. Ashley Judd. <laughs> and they're literally saying we want to bomb the White House. I mean, how insane is this? that they think they can act with total impunity and they can stir up literally these people to, to start a violent revolution. I mean, these people are radicals. They're getting exposed for who they are, which are radicals, and they support domestic terrorist organizations like Antifa. Yeah, well, the, the problem right now is they were in power for so long. Hollywood, right. that they own the world, and now they're beginning yes, right. to they do not and they're adamant about losing their power just like the Clintons are 
Well, it's interesting. What's your take on just a couple of weeks ago that Clinton's house all of a sudden is setting on fire when uh, there's more investigations pending uh, that are looking into their files and things of like that? I mean, um, yeah, I, I think it, yeah, I think it was definitely to burn something, but I had to be humorous about it. I tweeted uh, right when that happened that I'm sure they used my book for kindling. <laughs> Genius, genius, genius. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because they are the ones who, of course, acid washed their, you know, uh, uh, servers with 30,000 leaked emails. You know, they had just, I mean, just totally broke all federal law. And they're just, they were complete above the law. And people on the conservative side, we were getting depressed because everything they do, which is completely illegal, they're breaking all these federal laws, 30,000 plus. I mean, and they just get away with it. I mean, it's like, well, they wow. don't just, yeah, they don't just get away with it. They have help from the <laughs> FBI and the Justice oh Department gosh. with McCabe and with Comey and with, uh, listen, that's coming to light too. And they're going to be, uh, I really believe that this is, that, that they're going to be taken down. All the criminality that has gone on within our government with the justice and the FBI. Well, it's, un it's incredible because it is almost like a day of reckoning. They are in panic mode as their whole system of control, their grid of control is starting to collapse before their eyes. But again, that's also a dangerous time because that's when they can really start getting radical and really start getting pushing it, you know, things that, that are calling, they've been calling for killing yeah. Trump since the beginning. We have to be praying for our president. Don't we have to be sending letters of encouragement to him? Don't we have to be talking to our senators and our congressmen to say support the president? I mean, don't we have to get active on the local level to support our president? Yes, we definitely do. And, you know, I get these questions all the time. How, if I was really raped, could I support President Trump with all the allegations? And I tell them these are mm. allegations against a wonderful man and everybody deserves due process. You don't automatically just condemn him. Uh, I personally do not believe them. Well, he's been he, he's a one man. He's a he's a one woman type of guy. If he's going to marry, if he's going to date somebody, he's going to marry them first. I mean, he's not going to just be playing around like a playboy. My goodness, if you're that high level of profile person and you do that, uh, you know, other than Bill Clinton, they will have so much dirt on you. The fact that after one year they have not produced anything on the president shows no. that this guy has been aware of public life. Yes, I, and I, I just wish they would let him do his job, but they're not going to, and we have to face yeah. that. They're not going to let this man work for us. They're going to do everything that they can to make him uh, have a hard time of it. Well, you know, top news on Infowars.com is an article talking about how President Trump will make Mexico pay for the wall. He's going to be negotiating a NAFTA trade deal and through that use some of the funds that the benefits that we'll get on the U.S. side to go into building the wall. So he's saying, hey, I'm going to still keep on that promise. This is a president. When have we had a president, literally, that has not flip-flopped since the time of his campaign and has delivered on promise after promise after promise. This is so rare in the history of American politics. Right, this is a businessman. He knows how to <laughs> run a business and our government is a business. Uh, yes. they, they can't stand, well, he's, he's draining the swamp from all of these people that have been in government for their own personal gain. He's getting rid of these people. Well, it's him standing with folks like uh, you, Juanita, and of course, everybody else who is awake and standing up and doing their own thing. We may not be as powerful as a president, but every single voice and every single heart that is out there beating with the lifeblood of God within them stands up against evil and does their part in the battle between good and wickedness. Well, oh, folks, it's been such an important uh, uh, um, uh, work that you've been doing, Juanita. Let people know how to support the work that you're doing. Also, how to get uh, your book and your upcoming event. Uh, one more time, when is the event um, and where will, will it be held in Las Vegas? 
Yes, it'll be held at Las Vegas. We have a meet and greet from five to eight on Friday night at the Donald Trump Hotel. And then on Saturday at noon is when all the speakers will be there at the Grant Sawyer Veterans Memorial. And we're looking for a big crowd. Open to the public as well. So everybody who's out there in Vegas, check it out. Go support the conservative women that are standing up for our rights. They're on the front line. The speakers will be there. It's going to be a great night. And of course, you're going to be here, be able to meet uh, the folks, uh, the speakers, et cetera, hear their testimonies, hear their words, hear their encouragement for those who are, you know, uh, standing up against uh, uh, this type of un uh, unrighteousness and wickedness. We are so grateful, uh, Ms. Broderick, again, for you to join us and share with us those wonderful things. Once again, you better put some ice on that. It's her new book. Uh, it's Juanita's story. Absolute must read. For all the patriots out there, uh, pick up the book, support her cause. She is such an important historical figure at this time that is standing up for God's uh, righteousness, his sovereignty, trying to protect all peoples, not only just Christians, but all peoples from this type of assault from known predators. Juanita, thank you so much for joining us. Right. And of course, if anybody wants to get my book, they can yes. just go to JuanitaBroderick.com. You heard it, folks. And Mr. George, I see him in the back. He's having a great time. He's getting ready for <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> we thank you all for joining us this morning. And we pray that you have a great and blessed, blessed day. Give God all the glory on this gorgeous day. If you're in Pennsylvania, bundle up. It's going to be cold out there, folks. And we will see you tomorrow, 5 a.m. sharp on the King's Report. God bless God's speed and may his kingdom come. Chains around us, by your grace we are no